Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I know we still have a few people uh, flowing in, but we're going to go ahead and get started so that we can um, try and stick to about 30 minutes. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jesse. I work for Emerging Destinations. We are part of a team that represents the Guyana Tourism Authority. And today we have Nicola from the Guyana Tourism Authority to take us through this beautiful destination and just kind of give you a 101 session. Just a few housekeeping um, memoirs. This is going to be recorded. So if you have to step out for a moment, we will be um, recording and sending a playback. So don't worry about that. We will also be taking questions throughout the webinar. So please do so um, on the GoToWebinar control panel. You can um, ask those questions throughout the webinar and we will have Nicola get to those at the end of the session. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna hand everything over to Nicola joining us from Georgetown, right Nicola? Yes. Wonderful. So um, I'll pass everything over to her and just encourage everyone to ask questions throughout the webinar and take it away, Nicola. Thanks, Jesse. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicola and I'll be speaking about Guyana today. Guyana is a rare kind of place when you can only find nature in its original form. That is one of the big taglines we're using right now for our destination, Guyana, South America Undiscovered. A little bit about me. My name is Nicola Balram. I was born and raised in Georgetown, Guyana. I'm the, currently the senior marketing officer for the Guyana Tourism Authority. And those images you see are actually some of the places I've been fortunate enough to visit over the past year while working in this capacity at the Guyana Tourism Authority. All right. So again, it's a small um, country found in South America. It's about the size of Idaho and it's located just below the Caribbean Sea and just above Brazil. It's actually the only um, country in South America where English is the native language. So I, would, I know you are probably wondering, how do I get to Ghana? There are several airlines that um, do direct flights to Ghana those being Caribbean Airlines, Liat, Fly Jamaica, and Copa Airways. And you can usually connect through Miami or New York in the United States of America. Copa Airlines, you can get connections through Panama. And Liat is very popular with a lot of our Caribbean islands. Um, a lot of European travelers and some from the United States as well use the Liat Airways to fly into the Caribbean region and then take a direct flight to Guyana. American Airlines also recently started serving Destination Guyana from Miami. They fly four times a week and their flights depart Miami at 6 p.m. and arrive in Georgetown at 11.40 p.m. And the return flight is at 1.15 a.m. and you arrive in Miami around 5 a.m. in the morning. <coughs> All right, so for Guyana, our um, main draw, our main... Um, the main highlights of the destination are nature, adventure, culture. Guyana is a pristine um, country that has a lot of virgin rainforest within about 90% of the population living on the coastland and leaving the country's interior lush and untouched and ready for exploration. Uh, Guyana forms part of the Guyana Shield, which comprises a bit of Venezuela, Brazil, and Suriname. The Guyana Shield comprises of parts of Colombia, Venezuela, and the northern parts of Brazil, as well as Suriname and French Guyana. It's one of the only four pristine tropical rainforests left in the world, covers an area of 1.2 million square miles, and Guyana is often sold with, South America, with uh, French Guyana and Suriname as a three Guyana package. Guyana was actually ruled by the British, and it was named British Guyana before we became independent in 1966. Guyana's 83,000 square miles can be divided into three main tourism geographical regions, the coastland, the rainforest, and the golden savannas. The Amazonian rainforest, immense waterfalls, vast open spaces, savannas, mountains, and rivers are all part of its tourism draw. The image here is of Kaichor Falls, which is the main tourist attraction for a lot of travelers internationally and locally as well. It's the most, it's one of the longest and most powerful single drop waterfalls in the world with a sheer volume of 741 feet of water flowing over it daily. 
One of the biggest draws is also the extraordinary biodiversity. Guyana is often known as the land of the giants because of a lot of giant species that we have. We have jaguars, giant ant eaters, our paima, which is the world's largest scaled freshwater fish, black caiman, which is the cousin to the alligator and crocodile, monkeys, snakes, including the anaconda. We have over 900 species of birds and Guyana is usually a big uh, bird watcher's paradise or a birder's nature paradise. The image here is of the Huatsin or the Kanji pheasant. It's the national bird of Guyana. But also we find a lot of rare species that a lot of um, heavy, heavy duty birders come to enjoy, such as the Guyanan cock of the rock, the harpy eagle, as well as I think the crescent harpy eagle. A single north-south road is all that connects uh, most of the country to each other. There is one single road that leads from Georgetown, which is more on the coastline towards the Caribbean islands, to the Rupununi savannas, which is more down south to close to the Brazil border. On this road, that's where you find a lot of the eco lodges and a lot of the attractions, such as Kaishore Falls, um, the mountains, Park Islands, and Kanuka Mountains, as well as a lot of the wildlife. Um, throughout the rest of the presentation, we're also going to cover some of the highlights that you can experience in Guyana. This is primarily focused in the rainforest and savanna regions of the country, which is the key tourism areas. Uh, before we start on that section, we're actually going to start on Georgetown. So Georgetown is the capital city of Guyana. It's found on the coastland. It's about 40 minutes drive from the international airport, the Chedi Jagan International Airport. Um, we'd like to say that Guyana is the perfect mix between South America and the Caribbean islands because although the landscape is very much so of South America and you feel a lot of the South American vibes more south in the country, when you are on the coast and you feel the Caribbean history and the Caribbean uh, rhythm that the people have. We're a country mixed with six different races and we have a, a history similar to that of the islands such as Barbados, Trinidad, uh, Dominican Republic, etc. Um, Georgetown is heavily known for its culture and heritage. Um, the church here, St. George's Cathedral, is one of the tallest wooden churches in the world. Um, it's also vibrant in its markets, um, local market scheme, the fresh fruits and produce. And the gentleman here, his name is Delvin Adams of Backyard Cafe. He takes you through the markets and you get to shop with him, to see what the experience is like, and then he carries you back to his home where he prepares a meal for you and you enjoy it in his backyard. He's very famous for his cheesecake, his guava and mango cheesecakes. As earlier mentioned, Kaichur Falls is the world's most powerful single drop waterfalls with 255 meters um, of water flowing over or 400 and 741 feet. It's about five times the height of Niagara Falls and one of the main attractions that any traveler comes to Guyana must see. Uh, the people of Guyana is also one of the big highlights. Our population is just under 800,000 at 750,000. Um, we boast of six different races, Europeans, Africans, East Indian, Portuguese, Chinese, as well as our native Indians called the indigenous peoples of Guyana, or as they were previously known, the Amerindians. Africans were brought over to Guyana as slaves. Um, after the end of slavery, the Chinese, East Indian, and Portuguese were then brought over as indentured immigrants. Um, when Guyana gained independence in 1966, a lot of the races decided to stay, and that's how we have our cultural melting pot. The indigenous peoples of Guyana, also previously called the Amerindians, they were actually here um, first. When Guyana was discovered by the British, they were already in, uh, inhabiting the land. In that specific ethnicity, they have nine distinct cultures or tribes. Each have their own distinct flair or um, their own practices, but they're very common in their main values and goals. Many operate the lodges, and they are community-owned and led lodges. The community usually comes together, build a lodge for visitors and travelers, and the monies and the the monies and the and the experiences that a lot of the villagers 
tend to get in tourism come from this lodge directly. Guyana is known primarily for its nature, adventure, and cultural experiences. Some of the highlights you can do are horseback riding in the ranches, usually found in the South Rupinuri region, fishing in the rivers and the oceans, visiting some old Dutch ruins, including, including Fort Island, Fort Zelandia, Kai Koveral, the industrial tourism at the Rice and Sugar Estates and Golden Bauxite Minings, and Guyana is very big for wildlife and birding photography. One of the highlights for a lot of travelers is fishing and boating on the Rupununi River. Um, this river runs through the main tourism area of Ghana, which is the north and the south Rupununi. And in the river, you can find many different species of fishing. You can fish the arapaima on a catch and release basis. You can also fish for piranhas and catfish. And it's also a good area to do bird watching in the mornings or late afternoons, as well as night wildlife spotting. The accommodation in Guyana ranges from resorts, hotels, um, Airbnb rentals, lodges, guest houses, and bed and breakfast. On the coastland and in Georgetown specifically, you'll find a lot of boutique hotels. They have a lot of colonial feel to them as well as five-star luxury hotels such as the Marriott. And more into the north and south of Rufinun, you'll find a lot of eco lodges and ranches. Community owned and operated eco lodges. A large collection of eco lodges that allows visitors to connect with the indigenous peoples and the main cultural traditions. Um, these lodges in the north and south of Pununi, as mentioned earlier, the, um, a lot of the individuals from the villages, they saw tourism and the visitors there as a source of their main income. So they built the lodges to accommodate their visitors and their guests and whatever money is, um, is gathered from these lodges that goes directly back into the development of the villages. When you're at these lodges, you get to live like the indigenous peoples, experience their way of life. Um, you get to fish, to bird watch, to wildlife spot. You get to hike, um, horseback ride, as well as if you're very interested, you can actually take part in some of their day-to-day -day activities at the lodges and ranches as well. Apart from that, we also have some research lodges. Um, Arakam River Lodge is such is one example. This is not only a lodge for the community, but it's also a research center where a lot of scientists from the United States and Europe and a lot of research students in universities come down to explore and examine the biodiversity again has to offer. Around this area, you can also do some mountain hiking up Turtle Mountain. You can go wildlife spotting on the river during the day and in the night, and they also have a pet kaiman named Sankar. Not that far from Atta Lodge, if you travel down that one lone road, you'll, uh, from Ayurkam River Lodge, you'll find Atta Lodge. Atta is actually an indigenous word meaning hammock, and it's very famous for its canopy walkway. The Ayurkam canopy walkway found at Atta Lodge is a space of the air construction. It's 50, 500 feet long and 100 feet above the ground. You enter at ground level and you climb up um, stairs that are rooted in the earth until you get to the height. It's suitable for all types and levels of fitness. It's this, um, this walkway has three main viewing points. It's usually allowed one person on the ramp at a time to travel from one point to another. One of the lodges, the eco lodges that is um, very famous for where it is and was actually the first to start community owned and led tourism in Guyana is Sarama Eco Lodge. This is found in the North Rupununi region. And uh, the lodge actually started in the late 1990s. It was built by the now Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs and where the community saw the benefits of um, housing tourists and visitors and travelers and how opening the world up to them benefited their communities. Um, through the great example of Sarama, other villages around the area saw that this was another source of income for them and it's a way of preserving their wildlife through not harming the wildlife but showing travelers and visitors how special it is and therefore able to persuade other lodges to do the same. 
after Saramo, one of the highly requested and anticipated lodges was Rewa Eco Lodge. This is found on the Rewa River, and it's very popular for our climb of fishing and sports fishing. It's also a very hot birding spot for a lot of veteran birders. If you travel along the river past Rewa and Sarame, you come to another research facility named Kaiman House. This actually, the house actually started as a home for a researcher from the U.S. Over time, they saw the they saw the benefits of building up a lodge around the facility and around the areas, such as Sarama and Rewa did, and they also had they also built their um, lodge as well. Kaiman House is very popular for their Kaiman research project, which they continue today. It's called Kaiman Tagging. In the nights when the during the low seasons, when the water is down, you can actually go with some of the villagers into the rivers and catch a Kaiman. They will bring it up onto the banks and you will be able to tag it and measure it and mark it and record that measurement. They let the Kaiman go go back into the water, but this is the way that they keep a tag of how the population is growing and how healthy that population is around the area. One thing you can notice with the lodges right off the bat, based on the images, is that no lodge, although they're all located in the same area or of the same country, each has its own unique feel to it. Cayman House looks more like a tree house. Saram Lodge is a bit more open and uh, more into mountains and savannas, and Rewa Lodge is a lot more of a riverside lodge. When you step out of the north and the south Rupununi, you come to more privately owned eco lodges. These can be found a bit closer to the coastland. Uh, one example is Baganar Island Resort, which is found on the Escobar River. It has 11 superior rooms with end suites, two deluxe rooms with end suites, and four standard rooms with shared bathrooms, also conference facilities. These lodges host more of an island vibe, and you can see a lot more of the Caribbean influences on these lodges. Because of their proximity to Georgetown, it's also very popular for company retreats and day tours. Another lodge is our Point Nature Resort. This is on, on the Demerara River. It's the closest um, coastland resort that would give you the North of Nune experience because of the infrastructure of uh, the resort and the activities they offer. Here you can do kayaking, you can um, have a night wildlife tour as well as go mountain biking or walk through the nature trails. You can also go birding and wildlife spotting. One of the highlighted ranches of the South Rupununi region, which is closest to the Brazilian border, is Dadanaro Ranch. This is a working ranch and started in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Um, all the working ranches here, the visitors get to be a part of the day to day. And you get to ride horses, go wildlife spotting as well, and you get to learn how it is to live that ranching and cowboy lifestyle. Karanambu Lodge is also found on the border of the South and North Rupununi region. It's very famous for its giant river otter sightings and its anteater species. Um, there's also a pond not that too far from the lodge. It has giant water lily pads. They say that these pads are heavy enough and sturdy enough to hold, withstand the weight of a one to two month old baby on it. Um, our room stock in Guyana comes close to 3,338 as of 2017. This includes all accommodations on the coastline and in our inland region as well. Um, in the year 2018 and 2019, coming forward, we're going to be heavily focused on the GTA on improving room stock and capacity, especially within the highlighted tourism areas in the North and South Rupununi. The best times to visit Guyana. Guyana's climate is warm and tropical throughout the year. The dry season is usually the best time to visit Guyana. When I say dry, I don't mean um, the ground is crippling, but dry is then it's not a lot of rainfall constantly throughout the day. So that way the water levels and the rivers will be a bit lower and it's going to be easier for you to fish and see the wildlife and you can also do climate tagging as well. 
Um, for the savannas and the rainforest regions, their peak season or their dry season usually ranges from October to April. And for the coastal region, it's February to April and July to November. Our main ports of entry are the Chidi Jagan International Airport, which most international flights come through. The other airport is the Eugene F. Karaya International Airport, commonly known as Ogol. Liat flies through that airport as their more port of entry. Yeah, and is also connected to Brazil through its Latin border and Suriname through its Molson Creek border. You can get to Brazil through road or you can get to Suriname through road and through the ferry that crosses at that border. All right, um, based on the table here, we've highlighted some of the main uh, source markets GAN has seen over the past years, the United States, Canada, Europe, Caribbean islands, some other uh, countries in South and Central America and some other countries that are not fully stated on cards, those are our main ones. Um, you can see the United States, Canada, Europe, specifically UK and Germany are usually our biggest markets. In the last couple of years, we have seen a lot of regional growth in a lot of Caribbean islands traveling to Guyana as well. Guyana is in the same time zone as the US and Canada. Um, the only difference is when there is daylight savings in both of those countries, it would not be the same. So for example, when it's no daylight savings, we are in the same time zone as New York, but for today, if it is three o'clock in Guyana, it will be two o'clock in New York. Transportation in Guyana. Um, the three main types of transportation by road, by river, and by air. Um, by road, Georgetown is well connected through good roadways, taxis, uh, private cars, as well as public minibuses for transportation. There are also bridges that cross over the main rivers in Guyana, such as the Demerara and the Burbies rivers. By river, um, you use the river to get to a lot of the lodges in the north and the south areas of Guyana, as well as down the Esquib River, which hosts a lot of the local um, island resorts closer to the coast. Guyana is accessible through air from uh, Georgetown to a lot of the tourism destinations in the north and the south regions, as well as to Kaitro Falls and some of the other indigenous villages in the country. Some of the lodges on the coastland, example, for example, Baganar Island Resort, you can also get that, get there through charter flights as well. In terms of charter flights around Guyana, you can get a five-seater, a nine-seater, a 13 or an 18-seater, depending on the airstrip you're landing at and the needs of your passengers as well. Jet boats connect through the Escobar River as well as small aluminum and wooden smaller boats through the smaller areas. Most of the lodges, when you um, stay with them and they are connected by rivers, they would have their own transportation for you for your transfers from one lodge to another or from a lodge to an airport. You just have to book with them. If you want to drive from Georgetown to the north and the south of Pannonia regions, there is that one main road that connects and the most appropriate vehicle would be the 4x4 Jeeps or 4x4 trucks because of the, road, the rugged terrain. Support for new operators and airlines. From the Guyana Tourism Authority, we aim to provide key information, assist with coordinating travel related events and setting up interviews, work with the joint advertising, support for familiarization trips, reception at airport based on your group numbers, help in negotiating hotel rates, and help building with the Guyana private sector as well. Any other information you need, you can also shoot us a quick email and we'll be more than happy to respond and help you out on what you need and work with you on promoting destination Guyana. For more information, you can visit our website at www.gayanatourism.com as well as the website for the private sector arm of the 
Ghana Tourism Authority. That's www.explorgana.org. This is of the Tourism and Hospitality Association of Ghana. And it has a lot of the private member uh, tourism stakeholders hold membership in this account. You can also visit statisticsgana.gov.gy, goinvest.gov.gy, or CGA airport-gy.com for more information on statistics in Guyana as well as the General International Airport of Guyana. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the webinar and I'll leave it out now for any questions anyone may have. Thanks so much, Nicola. We have just a few questions and I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Um, we're just wondering, are the indigenous lodges that you were talking about earlier, do they have air conditioning? Uh, no, none of the lodges um, in the indigenous regions have air conditioning. Guyana is trying to promote sustainable tourism. So a lot of the power you get in that region is actually from solar and they do have, um, they don't have air conditioning in that region, but the way the lodges are designed, it's designed to let air in um, to the rooms. Because of the altitude of some of these areas, as well as the fact that you're surrounded by a lot of greenery and um, vegetation throughout the night, it's gonna be very, very cool. Wonderful. And it's, I know that you get a nice breeze too, so it's actually very enjoyable. So um, don't be taken back by the, the no air conditioning. Um, I have an interesting question. The Sarama Lodge, um, someone's wondering, um, does it flood during um, high season or anything? Uh, not in the lodge, um, not the grounds for the lodge, but the surrounding rivers get really high in some of the surrounding areas. But the Sarama lot specifically is actually a little bit more on a hill. So the lodge itself would not flood, but the surrounding areas, um, the rivers and some of the roads will um, flood. Okay. A lot of the rivers where you get to do a lot of the activities and the road that connects Sarama to the other lodges and the other um, airstrips. And it gets a little bumpy when it's a little, uh, it's a little wet in those areas. So that's usually why the best time is the dry season to um, book and to experience because you get to do a lot more of the activities during that time as well. Understood. Can you talk a little bit about um, if guests require a visa or any vaccinations? Sure. So if you are a citizen of the United States of America, Canada, the UK, and several um, European countries, as well as Australia and New Zealand, you do not require a visa to travel to Ghana, just a valid passport. If you are from um, South, some of the South Asian and Asian countries, such as India, you will require a visa. Usually you can get a visa through any, um, any embassy or consulate Ghana has. They, the closest one in the United States can be in Washington, D.C. or in New York, or you can get a visa on arrival. For a visa on arrival, there is a process that you have to follow and you work with our Ministry of Foreign Affairs to get that process. It usually takes about three to four weeks to get that process. Um, once it is processed, it is emailed to you and you'll have to walk with that when you enter into the country. If you go to GuyanaTourism.com, that information is also there, as well as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Guyana, it will walk you through those steps, as well as have the list of countries where you do not require a visa to travel to Guyana. Perfect. Um, I'll do... Um, go ahead. Sorry, Nicola. <laughs> Uh, in terms of vaccination, you yeah. would require a yellow fever vaccination and you can take your uh, malaria pill as well, especially if you're not uh, native to this region. Um, a lot of airlines, especially COPA, they actually require, they are required to see that yellow fever vaccination card before they let you board the airline. And that's not just traveling to Guyana with COPA, that's traveling to any South American country um, that has that as a requirement. Okay, I'll take one last question and then we'll get everyone on their merry way. And I know that this is something in the forefront of a lot of people's um, minds. Can you just talk about the, the general safety of Guyana? Sure. Um, when traveling to Guyana, we urge you to have caution as you would in any other destination. 
Um, we don't expect you to go to a new country and just be out in the middle of the night. Um, other than that, when you're in the cities, just ensure that you're always in your groups and get into your hotels by a decent hour. When you are in the jungle and in um, the North and South of Indian area, the most important thing you can do is listen to your guide. You will not be in any danger with any people around you, but you there are wildlife around that area. And especially in the night when you will not be able to see as vividly as you would during the day, um, we don't want any, any unfortunate events. So the most important thing to do is listen to the guide. We've never had any uh, major instances with anyone traveling into Georgetown or in the areas that had anything uh, stolen or, or bitten or any bad experiences from it. And that is just in my time being at the GTA here. But we urge you to have the same caution as you would traveling to any de other destination, especially if it is your first time. Of course. And we work with a lot of trusted partners, so more than happy to answer that on a more specific level if anyone has any questions. But um, I just wanted to thank Nicola for um, her time today. We kept it at 31 minutes, so um, we'll let you guys get out of here. But again, this was recorded. We'll send um, a playback for everyone. And if you have any questions, um, just feel free to reach out. We are here to help and um, if we can do anything, just let us know. But everyone have um, a great rest of your week. Um, and thanks for doing this today, Nicola. Thank you guys for having me. And you can always reach out um, to Jesse or myself for any other questions. Wonderful. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks.